Hi, it's Min here and today I wanted to talk to you, I'm dropping things, about authentic marketing online. Um, so I'm just going to have a look here. Okay. I wanted to start off by talking to you about how marketing has changed and why it's different now. So the way that marketing used to work was that you would throw a heap of money at an ad campaign. You'd probably go to an advertising agency or the like, and you would create an ad campaign and hope that it hit the mark. It would be a kind of daisy cutter approach to advertising. So the ad agency would throw it out onto um, whatever platforms you could afford, newspaper, radio, whatever. Um, but it was a daisy cutter approach. So it just kind of went out everywhere. And if you had enough money and if you did it often enough, you might get some leads. And from that, you might get some sales. But the thing is that people aren't present for these kinds of traditional forms of advertising anymore. People don't listen to the radio. They listen to Spotify on their phone. They don't generally watch free-to-air um, TV where there's the ability to pay for ads because they're too busy watching downloaded movies or watching Netflix or Foxtel or whatever. Um, people don't often read um, print newspaper, so there's not the option of capturing their attention with advertising in this way either. So where people are is that they're online, and the thing is that they're savvy now. In fact, we're educating ourselves more than ever before we reach in our wallet and buy something. We intuitively know, um, we want to know, sorry, where our money is going. And you probably see this with your clients as well. I know I do. If you work on a relationship with someone for even a few minutes before you make a sale, you're more likely to make the sale. Um, and that's just the way that it is. So some statistics about marketing online and why it's a good idea. Facebook has 14 million steady users all the time. WordPress, so the platform where most people have their um, blogging kind of uh, websites, I've lost my words today, has 5.7 million. YouTube has an average um, monthly viewer of 13.9 million. And Instagram has 5 million active Australian users every month. The average user of Facebook is logged into the platform for 20 minutes a day. And if you're selling to millennials, so they're people that are aged 15 to 34, so just a little smidge younger than me, then you need to have a kick-ass online presence because 91% of this demographic uses Facebook. 50% of 18 to 24-year-olds log on to Facebook as soon as they wake up. So I'm talking phone in hand, one eye open, kind of still under the covers, that's when they're on Facebook for the first time in the day, but it wouldn't be the only time. Now, the thing is that people don't go to social media to be sold to. They go there to be entertained. And I guarantee if you post on your business page only about your product or your service, you won't make as many sales as if you mix things up a bit. So you know yourself when you are standing at the supermarket checkout or you're waiting at the school gate to pick up your kids, you get your phone out, don't you? In those pockets of time, you grab your phone and you start mindlessly scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or whatever just to fill in that two-minute pocket. And you don't go there to be sold to. You go there to just fill in that time, to just be entertained. So the way that selling on Facebook and Instagram works is like this. You attract people to your page 
who like your stuff, who want to hear from you. They want to hear your message. And then you begin to build trust with them and form a relationship. So you do this by regular and valuable messaging. It needs to be often and it needs to be consistent. People need to know that you're going to show up for them. And essentially, this is all you need to do. Just show up every day, somewhere, without fail, and share your message. Why authentically marketing um, is absolutely the best way to create a following online. So this is it. What you need to do is to place yourself as the expert in people's eyes at whatever it is you do. And then you need to build the trust with them. If you allow yourself to show some of your belly in your marketing, in your content, then you become relatable. So by that I mean little things that allow you to be to people to English for people to see your vulnerable side. Okay, so sometimes if things aren't going my way, I'll make a quick live stream into one of my Facebook groups and I'll say, you know what, I've had a really shitty day because the kid's really moody and he's done this and, you know, life of a single mum, this is what's going on for me. And other women relate to that because they have days where their kids have done their head in as well. Okay, and then that relatedness builds trust with them because they know that I get them and they get me. They understand where I'm at, okay? And so then that trust makes it easier for them to spend money with me when the time comes, okay? And that time might be a week after they start following me. It might be two years after they start following me. And sometimes I have people sitting quietly in the background just watching all my content, just taking it all in, and then 18 months, two years down the track, bang, they're there and they want to buy from me. And that's okay because sometimes people just need that little bit longer to build that trust, to build that relationship before they're ready or perhaps the timing isn't right for them before that. But it's this relatedness that makes people remember you. So they say to themselves at some sort of subconscious level, I like you because you're a bit like me, okay? So talk about things that are related to you and not related necessarily directly to your business. Excuse me, I've got wine going on here, so I'm just going to have a little wine because it is 11 o'clock at night when I'm recording this. You might be able to see the bags. Um, I remember talking to um, a man, and I usually don't work with men, but I was staying at a B&B and it was run by this lovely couple and the man um, had a building business. And I was asking him, he was asking me lots of questions about social media and how it works and things. And I was asking him who his clients were, who comes to you and asks you to build them a house. And he said, well, generally they're people from Melbourne, from the city, and they want to move to the beach. And it's because it's a lifestyle change. So what they'll often do is have a house built um, pre-retirement. And then when they're ready, they'll, they'll use it as a weekend or when they're ready to live there full time, they'll pack up their business or whatever in Melbourne and they'll move into the house. And I said, right, okay. So it's not the house that you're selling. And he was like, well, yeah, it is. And I said, no, it's not. It's the lifestyle. It's the place that you live. It's your life that they want. And so that's what you need to show them in your content. So this guy was a surfer. He used to sometimes when the swell was right on any given day, he used to pack up his tools and call it quits at lunchtime and go surfing for the afternoon. And so I said to him, that's what you need to do in your content. You need to take photos of your ute full of the tools and then photos of the surf and say, you know, packed up work, this is what I'm doing for the day. Because that's the thing 
that would appeal to people. If you go fishing, take photos of the fish that you catch because that's what people want. That's what they want to be doing. What you're doing in your life now is why they're moving to this area. And he was like, yeah, okay, I get that. It's, you know, people will relate to what, what I'm doing every day and that's what they want. Absolutely, that's what they want. So um, there's certain things that my followers, the people that have been taking my content in, all know about me because I talk about it all the time and because I'm generally fairly open about my life and what's going on in it because I know that each of those little things that I talk about are going to build relatedness. Can you hear my dog going off? Always when I do videos, he starts barking. So the things that they know about me are that I have a kid who is my biggest challenge and also my biggest treasure, that I love a glass of wine, which is why I don't mind drinking when I'm doing my videos. Oh, I also love to train hard at the gym, but for the last six months or so, I haven't been able to do that. Um, they know that I work fucking hard in my business because they know that I'm doing videos at 11 o'clock at night. And they also know that I don't take myself or life too seriously. So ask yourself this question for a minute. What is it that makes you trust someone? Is it their honesty? Is it their openness? Is it their strength of character? What is it? Maybe make a list. Maybe pause this video and write down all the things that you know make you trust somebody. Whatever that list is, that's how you need to be on your Facebook page. So I'll take a little sip. You pause the video and go make your list about all the things that um, make you trust somebody. Okay, have you done it? Cool. So now you've got your list of all the ways that you can build trust with people. You know that that's what you need to do. So then when the time comes for somebody to buy whatever it is that you're selling, you've already done the work. The person buying already trusts you because you've been showing up consistently for them. You and your business are front of mind when that purchase time rolls around. So something else I wanna to talk to you about is not being afraid to get emotional, okay? It's emotion that sells. So when you allow your passions and your fears and your sadness to be seen, that's what will sell. You think about all the things that um, all the, the bloggers and all the people in business um, do that are super successful. Consider people like Constance Hall. I'm not sure if you followed her, but she's just a mum with a house full of screamer kids and the posts that she does go viral because she says things that tug on people's heartstrings. She makes them angry. She evokes an emotional response. So when she published her book recently, it sold out. They couldn't print them fast enough. They couldn't mail them out fast enough for all the people that were demanding copies of it. My most engaging posts are the ones where I get all ranty and angry and I stand up on my soapbox and I start behaving like a two-year-old having a tantrum. And people relate because sometimes they feel like standing on a soapbox and getting all ranty, carrying on like a two-year-old. Now, the thing is that when it comes to authentic marketing, there's going to be some obstacles that come up for you. So there's different ways to overcome them because the thing is that this is not the normal way to necessarily market a business. It's a bit different and it pushes people outside of their comfort zone. So one of the things that 
can stop people is having ideas about what it is to post. Where do you get ideas when you just suddenly are blocked and you don't have any creativity? Like it just isn't there. One of the tricks that I do is find some inspiration. So I will start following people that have similar businesses or I'll start looking at different um, trending posts on Facebook or I will just have a bit of a scroll and see what other people are doing. Something else that I really focus on is increasing my vibe, so getting my energy up. So I'll do things like use music, use incense, um, do something that makes me happy, do something that makes me laugh, watch something on YouTube, anything that will get me in a higher kind of frequency. So I've got, you know, a higher vibe. I'm happy and I'm energised and I'm ready to go. Usually when I do that, I find that ideas start to come. So how do you ensure that you're consistently doing the work to get the results? Because you need to be there every single day for your followers and to build that trust. Now, the thing is that if you're used to putting one thing on social media a week, and suddenly Min tells you that you have to be there every single day, at least once, that's sometimes a bit challenging. And the thing to remember is when you are making new habits, to jump from posting once a week or once a month to every single day is a big leap. But if you just do it incrementally, a little bit of a change every day or a little bit of a change every week doesn't feel as dramatic and you're not setting yourself up for failure. So make your new habits about posting consistently and often and make it a new part of your routine. Practice that consistency. Check in with yourself every week about what sort of posts you've done. Have you been there every day? But don't beat yourself up if you haven't because it's not the end of the world. Okay. Facebook is now a pay-to-play environment. There's no getting around it. So you need to learn how to spend your money well. Facebook will organically show your posts to about 1% to 3% of your followers each time. You get more reach if people engage with your content. You'll get more reach if they share your content. You'll get more reach if you throw money at your content in Facebook advertising. Okay, that's a fact. Excuse me, wine. Facebook groups are fantastic for um, extending your reach. So get into them, create one if you want to. Um, an email list is a really good idea and you can leverage your um, social media following to get them onto your list. Um, what else have I got in my notes? Uh, don't do this. Counting followers and watching people unfollow you and getting all upset about it is counterproductive. The fact of the matter is that people are going to start following you and people are going to stop following you. And that's what happens. So get over it, don't watch the numbers and don't take it personally if somebody decides to not follow you anymore. They're not following you because they, um, they may not be engaged with your, your content. They're not following you because they have no intention of buying from you. They're not following you because they just, you know, don't want to see your message anymore. It isn't going to be that, um, that your message is wrong. It isn't going to be that you're getting all up in people's faces too much. It isn't going to be any of those reasons. It's not going to be that you're a bad person or people don't like you. All that it's going to be is that they're not your customer. So what they do by unfollowing you is actually creating space for somebody else to jump in and start engaging with your content, okay? So what do you post? Okay, 
What I teach is that there's three different types of content. There's promotional, there's informational, and there's conversational. So I use the acronym PIC, P-I-C, promotional, informational, conversational, okay? Promotional posts should make up a roundabout, okay, a little disclaimer. I'm about to go into teaching you how to create a social media strategy for your content. I don't re recommend strategizing the life out of everything you put onto Facebook and Instagram because I think when you do that, it loses some of that organic ad hoc kind of feel for stuff. But when you're just starting out or if you're in a particularly busy period and you need to be organized, then creating a, a online calendar or a content calendar and strategizing your content can be really beneficial. Okay, but keep in mind not to do it all of the time because you need to have that spur of the moment sort of in the minute kind of feel to your content as well. And doing this will lose some of that. Okay. So I recommend that promotional posts should be about 20% of your content. So if you post something every day on Facebook, then one of those posts should be a promotional post. They're fairly self-explanatory. Informational posts should be about 40% of your content. And so these are the posts that inform people, that educate people, that tell them something that they didn't already know. This is the stuff that places you as the expert in their eyes at whatever it is that you do, okay? The third post is the conversational post. So another 40%, okay? So if you're posting once a week for five days, this should be two of your posts. Conversational posts are just the chit chat. It's the stuff that just builds a relationship that lets people know a little bit about yourself. So this is where you would include photos of your kids' dirty footy boots at the front door during the season. Or you would post um, a picture of you having coffee in a, in a cafe somewhere. Or you would post something like, you know, a, a video of you taking a drive in the country on Sunday or something like that, you know. It's the stuff that shows a little bit of you, shows a little bit of your belly and builds relatedness with people, okay. So I'm about to wind up the video now. Um, I will give you a few ideas of different types of posts that you could do, what the content could be, okay? So maybe make some notes as I'm going through this of different ideas that sort of resonate with you that you think that you could possibly use in your content. I'm gonna to have to go soon because like no one, okay? So video is a killer on any platform. Video gets the most engagement. You need to get over yourself, you need to make video, end of story, that's what sells. The reason for that is that it's raw, um, oh, Facebook live stream, the reason that sells the most is because it's raw, it's unedited, anything can go wrong, sometimes does, people love it. Um, link up articles of interest of things in your industry. So share a link for an article or a blog post that somebody else has done, but keep in mind that while you're sharing other people's content, you're not sharing your own, okay? And the other thing is that you need to make it yours by giving some sort of opinion or giving some sort of narration on the article in the content as well. So talk about why you're including this in your content. Why are you sharing this article? What is it that you think is valuable in this article for your followers? The power of the word of mouth is still absolutely gold. And the way that we use this in our content marketing is by collecting testimonials and reviews. So ask people for them and then drip feed this into your content. Memes and inspirational quotes get quite good traction, but don't do it too much, okay? 
because if your Instagram profile is made up only of these, no one has any idea how to buy from you. No one has any idea what you do. Um, yes, they're probably all completely inspired, but that's not the point, is it? If you had out to make money, you want to do more than just inspire people. Include some posts in your content that show the behind the scenes of what goes on in your world. So if you are a product-based business and you have cardboard boxes full of product arrive at your house or your shop, then show photos of that. Show pictures of you packaging things up to mail out to customers, stuff like that. Um, ask questions. Don't forget to get other people's opinions. Everybody wants their opinion to be validated, so ask for it and your followers will jump in and give you theirs. Don't be afraid to use selfie photos because it gives your brand a face and people want to know who you are. Educate people. Teach them stuff for nothing and place yourself at the expert, as the expert in their eyes at whatever it is that you do. Um, don't forget to celebrate your wins. Include people in your business when you have some wins in your business. Share that. If you get a business award, share about that. Talk about what it means to you. If you've grown your business somewhat in the last year or so, if you're having an anniversary in your business, share all of those things. Include a call to action on your posts. So don't forget to give people a really easy, clear path to buy from you. And you'll do that at the end of your posts, um, including a click to buy, a link to buy, or you know, a way to get in touch with you or whatever, okay? So that's the end of my video on authentic marketing. The next video under here is on how to use my social media calendar. And there's the spreadsheet is below on this page as well. So get into that, have a practice at strategizing your social media content and figure out um, how you're going to plan your posts over the week or two weeks or month or, or whatever it is that you want to do. And let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to help. Okay, bye.